thank you so much for inviting us to Chase Field. Thanks for coming. Okay, so fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. Derek Hall is? Uh, Derek Hall is caring, compassionate, is a friend, is a father and a husband, cancer survivor, and leader of the greatest workforce in all of sports. I have to say, Derek Hall is a great guy. <laughs> I was born in LA and uh, had a great childhood. You know, we were a very small family. It was my mother, father, and my older brother, who is today, he's a very successful set designer in Hollywood. He's, he's very, very well known for what he does, and he's very talented. We moved all over the country. My dad was in the newspaper business, so he grew up in Arkansas, he and my mother, and uh, he was a, a big baseball player, and he was an all state catcher. He was an um, all-American catcher. The St. Louis Cardinals went to his house and tried to sign him, and his father at the time didn't think they had offered enough, so he said no, and my dad never got that chance again, but he got into the newspaper business, had a very successful career, but as a, as a result, we moved all over the country. So we went from LA, and we had several different homes in LA and around Southern California, to Dallas, to New Jersey, to Virginia, to Las Vegas, to Florida, oh, wow. um, so all over. So for me, yeah, I loved it. I loved moving around. I liked being the new kid in town. I liked, you know, making new friends everywhere I went. Whereas for other members of the family, like my brother, it was a little tougher, right? Yeah. He would have rather stayed in one place, and and he was always very sad when we left. I looked at it as a new adventure, a new place, and oh, I love and it. as a result, I had fans, or friends all over the country. Right. You, he wanted to plant roots, he and did. you're ready to bloom. I was ready to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. But God, there's more people to meet, more yes. places to see. Let's go. I love it. You yeah. continued that legacy all of these years later. What is that that one life lesson that you feel your parents taught you? Well, they taught us several, obviously. I mean, we are who we are because of our parents and the way that we're brought up. But I, I think it was really humility. And, you know, they, they always preach to me that you are no better than anyone else and you're equal to everyone else. And, and I think that's a very important lesson. And it's one that I've tried to teach my kids. Don't you ever think you're better than anyone uh, or smarter than anyone because you're not. And they're definitely right about me not being smarter than <laughs> anyone else. Uh, but, you know, they were great. And I remember years later, my father, who's no longer with us, I lost him to uh, pancreatic cancer, which is just an awful disease. He had told me when I started my career in baseball, he said, you're going to move up quickly. And he said, because I know who you are. And he said, but I don't ever want you to forget who got you there. And I want you to know the name of everybody that works for you. I want you to know every security guard's name, every usher's name. And it's something that I've, I've tried to do. And it, I always hear him in the back of my head, you know, making sure that we know all of our employees because that's what this is about. It's not about me. It's not about our leadership team. It's about the people that tear the tickets and pour the sodas every night and thank our fans for being there. So it's really important that we know who they are. Yes. Oh my goodness. You just connected the dots for me because <laughs> later in this interview, I was going to ask you about this, but I'm going to ask it now. Fotsy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is that word and why does that mean so much to you? It really describes who we are. It's an acronym, Fotsy, for find a way to say yes. And I'm doing this because we have buttons that all of our game day staff wear that say Fotsy. And it was quite some time ago um, when, I, when I thought of the concept and we brought all the game day staff together before a game and I got up and I'm telling them how important they are and how they make the first impression and for people to come back, you know, it's gotta be just the greatest and we have to find a way to win even when we lose. And oh, by the way, we're gonna find a way to say yes. And you're all gonna wear this button and you're gonna find a way to say yes to every question that's asked. And there's a way to say no where it still sounds like yes. And every department, maybe not security, <laughs> has gotta practice right, this and right. find a way to say yes. But it's something that they take great pride in. And then we hear from other CEOs and other companies saying, tell us about FOTSI and do you mind if we borrow that as well and use it in our company? That's, I mean, it's rewarding to know that. You coined it, right? You we trademarked did, yeah. it, yeah, right? Okay, trademarked. good for you, because you are a smart business <laughs> guy. You were also diagnosed mm -hmm. with cancer, prostate cancer. How did that diagnosis change your life? I think it changes, you know, all of our lives when we hear that we have we have cancer. You know, I just learned this morning that my mother has cancer. It's just there's so much of it. Oh, um, I'm so sorry. Yeah, where she she now found out she has breast cancer. My wife went through triple negative breast cancer. You know, she got it seven years ago, but it's it's in the clear. I think whenever we do, you really it, it changes your entire perspective, and you take you take things for granted. And once you know that, you, you know, you have cancer or any sort of illness that you may have. You, you really appreciate everything that you have and you want to spend more quality time with those that you love and you want to be around the folks that you love at work every day and you have a different perspective as well. I mean, we spend more time here than we do with our family at, at home. So this is family too, but I enjoyed my time much, much more when, it, when I was going through uh, my treatment and, and through that whole process, knowing that I really appreciate everybody that I work with each and every day. I appreciate everybody at home and just changes things. Your outlook changes. 
I'm sorry, I'm just reacting to what you just said. Mm -hmm. I thank you for continuing this interview. Wow. That is that speaks to who you are. Thank First you. off, we send our prayers. Thank you to your mom uh, and to your family. I know she's strong. She's, she's a strong woman. She's she strong. has instilled that in you. Yep. When you look around this stadium and you see how you have transformed not only MLB, this franchise, but this community, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, you say community and that's what it's all about. That's what you're all about. And, and I know that we'll get into more discussion about community, but my legacy would just be to to have fans say that, that we, not necessarily me, but we provide the greatest fan experience. And when you talk about fan experience, it's everything from affordability, cleanliness, um, safety, and, and we do a really nice job. And, and when you have so many games, you have to make sure that you keep doing it each and every game and you don't take it for granted. Sure, you know, sure. so we, we appreciate what we do, but my legacy would be treating our fans better than, than any team in, yes. in all the sports, not just baseball. Community is one of the five pillars in your coined circle of success. Yes, very good. How important is it for you to make sure that when the community comes into this stadium, they feel like they're part of the Arizona Diamondbacks Well, family? they are. They are part of the family. I mean, we know that we are a community asset. We realize our social responsibility and the changes and impact that we can make on the Arizonans. It's been tremendous. We're going to surpass $85 million in community giving this year. And we don't go around bragging about it or pat ourselves on the back. That's not why you do it. You do it to truly make a difference and make an impact. Um, but it, it starts at the top. It's ownership that's committed to it. It's our leadership that's committed to it. Our players are so good in the community and so good yes. with fans. Um, our coaches, everybody, you know, all of our employees go out and they spend time volunteering and working for nonprofits and other boards that are important or, or special to them. That's the beauty of it all. What we can do and, and hopefully creating fans for life because we know we're not going to win each and every game, obviously. We know we're not going to have every season be a winner. It, it, there's a lot involved with a, a, a good season like the one we just had. You have to have luck on your side. The ball has to bounce the right way. And you have to have really career seasons out of, out of your players. But regardless of how we play, we know what we can do each and every year in the community. And we're going to continue to. And let's talk about the work. Let's talk about the Arizona Diamondbacks Foundation. You all are considered one of the top fundraisers uh, in in all of the Valley. Right. Talk about that work and how you're instilling that in the rookie players all the way to the veterans. Well, yeah, when you talk about players alone, you know, it's very important that we start with a rookie class every year and put them through a, a class. We basically teach them what we expect, what we want them to do when they're a part of this organization when they come up here. So they already know that. And in the, in the minor leagues, they're already working on it too. So they're going out and visiting hospitals and kids in hospitals. They're going to schools and they're reading to kids. Again, not because there's a camera with them. It's the right thing to do. By the time they get up here, we know what their interests are and we can tailor programs to them and for them and make sure that they're impacting the community their entire career here. So it's been, it's been powerful. So tell us about the Youth Jersey program. Watching what they're doing out in the community with little leagues and you know like our jersey program where everybody's wearing a diamondback <laughs> jersey i remember when my kids i have two boys and a girl and my two boys they're playing for teams and and amy and i my wife we're going out and buying rockies jerseys and pirates jerseys and a's jerseys and orioles and i'm thinking why am i wearing all this i don't want to wear this i work for the diamondbacks and every kid now is wearing a diamondbacks right. jersey but throughout the entire state of arizona to have this this program grow so much and and when we had gone out to all the little league and, and softball league programs and asked what's your most your biggest challenge what, what are you most concerned about each and every year they said the cost of uniforms and we thought well we can help yeah. so we're providing them with uniforms they can then spend that money on fixing their fields or building snack bars or you know perhaps waiving entry fees which a lot of them are doing that's the greatest so kids it are playing we need them playing we need them enjoying the game but also you know providing them an outlet you know just somewhere to be safe and have fun and hopefully become fans for life we know philanthropy. It is your heart, it is your soul. And after your diagnosis, you launched your own 501c3, the Derek Hall Pro State Foundation. What is the mission? Yeah, it's it's named Pro State for a pro state of mind. You know, you really have to be positive when you're battling this and going through it. And I had so much support. You always hear from people too. Boy, the you know prayer, uh, prayers are powerful. And I didn't really understand what that meant until I was going through cancer. You really do feel it, right? You, you feel the prayers and it makes a difference. But for me, it was really just driving awareness and educating men, telling my story, being as transparent as I could. And, it, and it's graphic. You know, when you read the story, you think, wow, why did he share all that? It was important for me to do so. And I still take 
hundreds of calls a year from men. Do you mind telling me or what should I do? And I don't want to give the advice of what they should do, but here are the options and here's what I went through. Here's my experience and how it changed my life. Men are, sometimes they're too brave and too bold to even go to the doctor. They just don't want to, right? Too manly to go. We can't be that way because when you catch these diseases early enough, you can, you can treat them. And that was the case for me. And I just want to share that with everybody else. I love it. You're, you're an advocate for prostate health. You're an ambassador for over 25 charitable organizations you either serve or are associated with. Do you have time to even sleep, Derek? I, I, I do, I do, Susan. Yeah, I, you know, I love it. There's a couple where, you know, I'm gonna be the chair for, for GPEC, which is such an important cause, trying to attract businesses here and grow our economy. But, but you know, the one that I'm chair of right now that I'm most proud of is Make-A-Wish, and yeah. it's Make-A-Wish America. Um, so I was the chair for quite a few years, a couple of terms here in Arizona for our chapter. And then I was asked to go to Make-A-Wish America. Boy, the, the impact that we can have on lives and what we can do for kids, just making a wish come true and you know these aren't all life-threatening they're, they're life-threatening but they're not terminal right. diseases that these kids are going through but to watch watch lives change by delivering these wishes granting these wishes we had when i was chair here in arizona one of the last ones we had was a, a teenage girl she was 15 years old had a rare stomach cancer and she was she was passing away soon unfortunately her wish was to go to the vatican and have the new pope read her last rites and say a blessing. And when our volunteers went and asked her why, why is that your, your wish? And she said, well, I know where I'm going and I'm okay with it, I've accepted it. It's for my family so that they could be comforted. I mean, I could lose it, you know, that's, that's powerful. We're losing it a lot yeah, in this we interview, are, yeah, aren't yeah. we? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is powerful and it's, it's in, it makes you feel good, right? It does. Give back. It, it, it does. It does. And, and it lets you realize just how fortunate you yeah, are absolutely. and how lucky you are to be healthy and alive. But the, if we can help others and make a difference, those are the greatest boards that, that we absolutely. serve on. And we encourage our, our employees to go serve on boards as well. Something that's yeah. important to them or, or go to the food banks or, or go to St. Vincent de Paul and, and serve a meal. You get in the car afterwards and you're driving home thinking, boy, am I lucky. And I think I just made a difference and I can't wait to get back It's there. exhausting, but it's a good exhausting. It is. It it's feels, so rewarding. It's just so emotionally connected. Yeah. What is your greatest accomplishment? Wow. Uh, greatest accomplishment other than, than my family and my kids, because they're, they're you know, my pride and joy. What we've built here, a culture that we've built, I, I think that, and we get recognized for our culture each and every year. You know, we're best places to work and best workforce year after year. The United Nations chose us as the friendliest you know, organization in, in all the sports. And that I take most pride in. And it's not what I've created, it's what they've created, right? So they love working here yeah. and they love being a part of it. But in addition to that, there's little things like creating Salt River Fields, which is considered the, the best training facility in all the baseball. Oh, it's beautiful yeah. and our fans have a blast there. What I'm most proud of, is what we've built for sure. And I think we need to, we need to do more, like championships. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very proud of the National League Championship last year. It's in our positions, you dream of being on a stage and accepting a trophy one day. Absolutely. And I've been in this game over 30 years. That was the first time I got to accept a trophy on, on the stage in Philadelphia. And I remember holding that, that trophy and I was numb. And I don't really remember much. I know they brought me over to, to interview me on national TV and I said something about our employees, of course, because that's, that's who come to mind first. We were going back to the hotel and we're gonna have a celebration there in Philadelphia with all of our players and the traveling party and their families. So we set up a ballroom. We were hoping we were gonna to get to do it. We did. And as we pull up and I've got one of my adult children with my wife and I, I said, you guys go ahead in, I'll be in there in a minute. And I went upstairs to my room, opened up the door in the dark, closed it, sat down on the, on the couch and just started bawling. It was, powerful Absolutely. so proud of that oh so proud yeah. any, any regrets i you know i think we all have some some regrets right i think uh, i think back to boy we're sticking to the theme of cancer here but there was one gentleman bob elmer uh who was a, a season ticket holder here and when we were changing our uniforms back in 07 um everybody was was very upset at the time and and so was my wife right everybody was upset <laughs> that the uniforms were changing colors and we brought in a group of, of season ticket holders and I was gonna show them the uniforms before anybody else saw them. And we had Matt Williams and Mark Grace put them on and it was almost like a, a runway show. And they come in and here I am going, well, if you look, the Sedona Red with the Sonoran Sand. And, and finally this gentleman, Bob Elmer, raises his hand. He said, Mr. Hall, I'm enough is enough. I'm tired of hearing this Sedona Red. You know, red is red, it's garbage. And I said, okay, I said, Bob, you don't like the uniform. I can't stand them. I said, 
if we win the division this year and I buy you a jersey, will you wear it? And we were supposed to finish in last place. And he said, if you win the division, yeah, I'll wear it. And I said, okay, well, we win the division in 07. We have Bob come in, I give him the jersey and he puts it on, we have a little party celebration. Well, Bob got really sick. Um, he got a rare form of cancer. We hadn't heard from him and he's in the hospital. His wife calls me and said, Bob hasn't spoken in over a week. He just woke up and said, I want to call Derek Hall. And so she puts him on the phone and he says, Derek, he says, I, I just had a dream. And he said, and I was flying in the air. And as I look down, I see Chase Field. He said, and as I fly closer, I realize no one's in the stadium, but I see all the green seats. And as I fly a little closer, I see one red seat. He said, so I flew down even closer to that and I could see it was my seat. And there was a plaque on it that said, Bob Elmer, quote, red is red. And I said, he said, I want that to, take, to happen when I, when I pass away. And I said, well, Bob, that's not gonna be for a long time. And I said, but you have my word. And today we have one red seat here that says red is red, Bob Elmer. But I wish I could have gone to the hospital to, to see him. For him to think of me right when he woke up. And I always regret not hanging up that phone and right away going to, to see him. So that, that's, that's a regret. But you know, you were there. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's always with us. And he's here. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can feel him okay. here. <laughs> he's here. Well, I'm I here. absolutely do feel <laughs> him here. What's next for Derek Hall? Uh, like I said, hopefully more, more championships for our fans. You know, I just yeah. want to win more. We have to plan on not winning. I think every team, the other 29 teams the same way. How are we still going to make our fans happy and want to come back? And it's the little things like what we do in the community or, or how we treat our fans here or what the giveaway items are, whatever. But I think what's next for me is figure out a stadium solution that our fans can be happy with and proud of. If it's staying here, which I hope we do, renovating this place so that they continue to make memories here. Uh, but I, I don't want to go anywhere else. I mean, yeah. I've been asked for, you know, do you want to be a commissioner? Do you want to be, you know, a, a different franchise? No. no. You know, this, this, is, this is home. This is family. Uh, so what's next is just continuing to, to get greatness out of everybody here, whether they're on the field or working up in those offices. They are so, our employees are the best. And they wear this logo with pride each and every day, and they keep me going. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I can't wait to get to work because of them. I can't thank them enough for all they do for their fans. One final question. If you could, knowing what you know, if you could go back and tell your 10-year-old self something, what would it be? Well, I would, I would tell my 10-year-old my self to wake up every day and, and tell my wife that I was going to marry. Um, and we've been together over 30 years, 32 years tell her how beautiful she is each and every day. And I still don't do that and I should. To spend more time with my kids, and I think we all say that, right? I wish I, wish I could tell myself, go spend more time with the kids. And, and in our sport, it's, it's 162 games. And we come in at eight in the morning and we don't leave until 11 o'clock at night and we're on the road a lot. And in LA, when I was working for the Dodgers, you've got the commute on top of that and living far away. And my wife did a beautiful job of bringing the kids to me. So they would come and watch games with me. And, but I think there was more that I could have done, just more time. So I would say, you know, treat everybody as well as you can. Don't ever think you're better than anyone, like my parents taught me. And spend more time with your kids one day and tell your wife every day how beautiful she is. You are named as one of the top 100 CEOs. That's got to feel amazing to you. It, it's nice. I mean, it's a title or a, or, a, or a naming, but it's not because of me. It's because of the people that work for us. I mean, I'm, I can only do so much, right? And, and we teach leadership to all of our employees. We have a leadership academy because we want them to grow. And I always say the customer doesn't come first. The employee does. And when I say the customer doesn't come first, people raise their eyebrows like, what? But the employee does. Because if our employees, who we call team players, if they feel rewarded, promoted, developed, um, invested in, they in turn are gonna treat our customers the way we expect them to be treated, yeah. and, and they do. But it's all about them. If I get a title or get an award or, or am presented with an award, it's their award. It's because of them. They make this place great, not me. You're it's in terrific. the soil here. There's no getting rid of you. <laughs> no, you are here. I'm not this going anywhere. It.